All right, joining us now, Eric Trump, executive vice president of the Trump Organization. So, Eric, she refuses to give an answer. I just keep going back to how many people have y'all let into the country? She will not answer that question. Your response just Lord, on only, that point. I mean, Laura, the only thing that's very clear using what she said over and over again, I've been very clear, is why she hasn't done an interview in 46 days, because she can't answer these questions, right? I mean, that, that was so apparent tonight. Brett asked her a simple question. Do you support, you know, sex changes for illegal incarcerated immigrants? Yeah, we're going oh, to get to that. I'm going to I'm going to follow I'm going to follow the law. No, no, do now, you I, support it? You know what Donald Trump would have said? No, no, I do not support it. Brett, I do not support it. That's what Brett, uh, Donald Trump would have said. You know, and she's wandering all over the place. Then she gets out the yes, border security is very important to me. If border security was so important to you, why did you fly 320,000 people on, on private planes into airports all across the country in the middle of the night? If border security was so important to you, why did you sell the border wall, meaning the slats of steel, right, that my father had built? Why did you sell it for scrap metal to the lowest bidder, right? Why, why did you sell off the wall? If border security was so important to you, why did you turn off all the security cameras that are on these massive poles 100 yards behind the wall, you know, so that people couldn't see the invasion that's handling, you know, that's happening at the southern border, right? And it's a hell of a lot more than 6 million people. I mean, 6 million people that oh, were let go way, in the United States, yeah. but over 20 million people ha have come into the United States, including, you know, 320,000 deaths this year, Laura, of, of fentanyl deaths of our, our youth in this country who have been poisoned based on the fact that we have that person right there who can't answer a damn question and clearly does not care about the issues at hand. That, Laura Ingram, is why she has not done an interview in 46 days other than call her da daddy podcast as a Category 5 hurricane is about to hit the great state of Florida. It it's a joke. This country deserves so much better than what we just saw. Yeah, I mean, her own administration has come up with the estimates of the number of encounters, they call them encounters, at the border. But she, again, I'm just going to go back to this. This is a very important point. She knows that that is horrifically damaging to her campaign. When Americans see that that migrants are getting stipends, monthly stipends, as we have veterans living on the streets in the United States of America, as we have families who can't afford to, you know, pay the, you know, the interest on their credit card or their or a car loan. And she's like, well, you know, the, le, let me finish. Uh, that whole let me finish thing, that was also a, a little strategy she tried to employ when she really couldn't sure. answer the question. She was also, Eric, asked again for the third time in a week, I believe it was a week, 10 days, if you're going to turn the page, if you're a change candidate, how does that manifest itself? Watch. So you're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. Again, falls back on bromides and cliches. A new generation of leadership, Eric Trump. Laura, her, her generation of, of leadership destroyed one of the greatest cities in America, which is San Francisco. Every company has left. Every bank has left. Elon Musk just left. There is no industry anymore there. You can't afford to live there. It's the most expensive city by far in this country. You can't walk down the street without getting robbed. You can't walk down the street without stepping over a hypodermic needle or walking through a homeless camp. She destroyed one of the great American cities, and this is her, you know, the next generation of leadership. If the next generation of leadership is what she did to San Francisco, that every single American ought to be absolutely petrified, and, and I, I think they are. The other question she couldn't answer, Laura, is... Why didn't you blow the whistle on, on Joe Biden? I mean, you were with him every day for a period of, of, of four years. You lied to the American people over and over and over, said that he was a wonderful president, that he had his cognition there. Clearly, the guy does not have... Why yeah, did we you lie that. to the American people? She, yeah, let we, let's play that soundbite and she, uh, finish it on the other side. You and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden, I have watched in, from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment 
and the experiment and experienced to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe were Biden, no concerns Brett, raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. Okay, that's another tactic. He's not on the well, ballot. We didn't say he sure. was on the ballot. We asked a simple question. When did you notice that he was in decline? Because you're saying that Donald Trump is unhinged and mentally unstable. How do you have any credibility in questioning his instability or uh, supposed instability when you wouldn't speak up against uh, uh, Joe Biden? Well, I mean, this is a problem. They're pathological liars, Laura. I mean, this is also coming from the person who said that you know, she worked at McDonald's and she was sweating there. It was so hot over the grease that she made French fries when she never worked at, at McDonald's. This is coming from the same person who picked a running mate that said he was in combat in Afghanistan when the guy never went to Afghanistan and never went into combat. I mean, you know, th this is the same person that said that they would absolutely ban fracking in, in Pennsylvania. And then she comes out and says, yes, I never I never said that. I, I think fracking is, is a wonderful thing. You well, know, she said that's five years ago. She liars. said, yeah, but she said that's five years ago. Brett brought up all of her old positions. And she said, well, that's five years ago. And she said, we're going to follow the law. Yeah, so, she kept saying, we're going to follow the so, law. So they make up Lord, the you're law. You're telling me that, that the person, sure, they just have no conviction. So, so that's fine, too. I mean, you kind of flutter in the wind. You don't know the president that you actually get sitting behind the Resolute desk in, in the White House. That's not what American wants. I mean, there was nothing about that interview that showed any kind of strength, any kind of, of backbone. I, I mean, you know, th there was nothing that was said from her in that interview. I mean, it was just the same sound bites that, frankly, she's been mocked for, for saying over and over and over, yes, we're going to turn the page. Let, let me be very clear. Donald Trump is a bad... I mean, L Laura, it is so sad. We deserve so much better. Our country is falling apart. Our economy stinks. Everything's too expensive. Taxes are destroying this country. Manufacturing's well, leaving this nation. I, I mean, nothing's working in this country, and that's the interview you get. And then she says she wouldn't do anything different than... Joe Biden, even though she's sitting three feet away from him in, in, in the, the office of the vice president, you know, which is about three feet away from the Oval Office. So she backs everything he did, but yet she's a different person than Joe. It, the contradictions don't make sense. I'm a really smart guy, but I, I, none of us could follow it. I don't think you could follow it either. I no. mean, and again, it's why she's avoided interviews for the last 46 days other than, you know, the Call Her Daddy podcast. Yeah, and the whole thing, like showing up late, that was kind of a little power move. We know why she did that. But just, I want to I want to go back to your your dad was at the Detroit Economic Club yesterday and put on, I thought was just like a master class that phrases you so, you know, too frequently. But it really was a master class in leverage, negotiations, why tariffs are an important tool in, in negotiations. And I thought to myself, Kamala Harris could not do that. If her life depended on it, explain the Federal Reserve. What does it do? Explain how, you know, you, you know, the Fed, uh, you know, works with interest rates. How does that affect markets? Could, do you think she could do that? I mean, I, I know you probably, you're going to say no, but she couldn't do that, again, if, 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 if their life depended on it. Well, I mean, uh, Laura, she's never actually had a real job, right? I mean, she's been in the federal government her, her entire adult life. She's never signed the front of a check. I mean, she's, she's never run a business. She's never actually had to be on the receiving end of, of the very policies that she puts in. I mean, she wants to, you know, have a tax on unrealized gains in this country. I mean, congratulations, everybody in this country is bankrupt. I mean, you again see her policies for San Francisco and how damaging they'd be. I was so proud of my father. I mean, that whole audience, they were standing up. They were, oh, I loved they it. were clapping. I mean, <laughs> he's 100% he's right. He's been right about tariffs. And it's the greatest negotiating tool in the world. Don't take your companies out of the United States. But she couldn't you know, talk and, and by about the way, it. Aside That's from... Of course that she couldn't. But, but aside from the don't take your companies out of, uh, out of the U.S., we're also going to make the United States the most business-friendly place in the world, right? I mean, we're going to have the lowest taxes, the best business environment, the lowest regulations. We're going to bring the wealth of the world to the United States, right? And we're also not going to allow you know, yeah. countries around the world to rip us off. I was I so proud didn't. of him yesterday. I thought he yeah. was... It was awesome. And it was positive. It was very positive. It was like, we're going we're gonna to rock this and have fun doing it. Eric, um, this was wild. But I enjoyed watching this because the contrast between Trump and her, I mean, it was phenomenal. All right. Thank you, Eric. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.